Hi, Tim with After Later Audio. Today we're going to look at the Quadraturia app within the original firmware on Ornament and Crime. Um, this app is based off of the Quadrature Wavetable LFO that is in uh, Easter egg mode on the Mutable Frames module. However, uh, Quadraturia adds voltage control over three of the four LFO parameters, as well as CV control over frequency or rate of the LFO. Um, it also has a tap function, so you can use CV to, uh, you can clock your LFOs. Um, you get four LFO outs, but uh, I think we'll, we'll uh, best wrap our heads around it while looking at the menu. So uh, yeah, let's dive in. Okay, so let's look under the hood here in Quadraturia. Um, this Charlie Brown looking thing, oh, kind of looks like Charlie Brown's shirt, right? Did I just date myself? Um, this is uh, four different LFOs, so the screen is actually uh, broken up into quadrants. It just looks like uh, the same thing right now because all of these LFOs are the same. Um, because internally, there are four LFOs. LFOs two through four or B through D are running at some ratio of the master uh, frequency of LFO one. So by default, the ratio is one. So all of the LFOs run at the same frequency. That's why they look the same here. The wave shape and the phase of frequency modulation of LFOs B through D or two through four can be changed relative to the parameters of LFO one. Uh, you can use shape spread, phase frequency spread, and coupling control. So let's just dive into this. First up, we have our frequency adjustment or tuning. Uh, you have a coarse or fine um, mode. So up here in the upper left-hand corner, you see it says C. That means we are in coarse mode. We're at 0.61 hertz. So we can adjust that here um, and then you click the left encoder that turns to an F that means we are in fine tuning mode so you can be a little bit more uh, surgical with your changes what's really cool here is if you don't want to sit here and uh, turn your encoder to make drastic changes you can uh, make these jumps up and down with the left and right encoders oh I should mention before I move on if tap mode is on it disables the encoder for uh, controlling the frequency then you'll have to send a gate or a, a trigger into three and that will clock your LFO okay so next up is the shape spread that sets the difference in wavetable position between each channel okay so the phase frequency spread is um, well, just buckle up. It's going to sound like word salad if you're not super familiar with quadra quadrature LFOs, but um, it sounds scarier than it is. The phase frequency spread sets the phase or frequency offset between each channel. So values greater than zero all the way up to 127, they offset each one of the, uh, the B through D LFOs incrementally with relation to uh, output A. So if you're all the way up at 127, the phase shift on output B is by 90 degrees, and then C by 180 degrees, and then D by 270 degrees. So when you have this at 127, you have uh, your full quadrature LFO, um, quadrature LFOs. Uh, and then interestingly, if you go into the negative below zero, this causes a progressive frequency shift or detune across channels B, C, and D with relation to channel A. Um, so rather than a phase shift, we're getting a frequency shift. So let's just actually, let's look at this really quick in the, um, let's just get a nice simple looking one. Let's go into the screensaver here. You can see now our quadrature LFOs. Here's the original, 90 degrees, 180, 270. Now let's go, oops, let's go change this to a negative. So rather than the uh, phase offset, we have a frequency offset. So you, you notice that uh, with it at 127, we had everything in this at the same frequency, but you can see that these are not in the same frequency. Let's actually take that all the way as low as it can go. There you go. So because they're all with, um, with relation, they ch the changes are all with relation to A. You can see how the, the the second LFO is just a little bit faster, and then the third is a little bit faster than the second, and the fourth is a little bit faster. You can also do like clock divisions and multiplications for the uh, the three out the three LFOs that are based off of the initial LFO. Uh, but when you do that, you can't get your full um, 
rotations in your uh, phase offset, these will only be able to go up to 90. Um, but we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit later. Next up is the coupling. This sets the degree of phase modulation bleed between each successive channel. So, um, you know, all of these are changing with relation to channel A. I think by turning up the coupling, you're, you're allowing each uh, successive LFO to be um, influenced by what's happening with the previous, not just based off of um, the first LFO. I really like the output range uh, setting here. So it is kind of like a an attenuator. It it, it sets the uh, the overall output range for all four channels. Uh, the range of the settings goes from zero, so no output, to 230, which equates to a nominal output range from about negative 3.5 volts to positive six volts. By default, with the offset setting at zero, um, so here we have our offset at zero, uh, the output range is asymmetric. By reducing the output range and then setting a positive outset, the output can be shifted so that it is unipolar um, or otherwise offset at the level desired. So if we've got uni um, bipolar LFOs going out, you can actually use the output range and the offset to make it a, uh, a unipolar signal. Um, and then the offset's pretty basic. It just uh, shifts the output on all channels up or down uh, by up to several volts. Next up, we have the frequency range, um, and I love this section. It's it's pretty cheeky, and you'll see what I mean here in a second. But yeah, this sets the the frequency range for the quadrature LFOs. Um, it goes from very fast to fast to medium to slow to very slow to lazy to very lazy, sloth, snail, glacial, geologic and then cosmological. Um, now, there's something to, to, that's really, really hilarious about this cosmological setting. The, uh, the slowest period for one cycle of the LFO at this setting exceeds 18 hours. Yeah, 18 hours. So um, I don't know how you'd use that, but if you find a cool use for it, send me an email and a video of, of what you're doing. Um, and then here's where you can really start getting pretty crazy. So the, uh, the B frequency ratio sets the frequency ratio at which LFO two or channel B, um, runs with respect to the master LFO. Um, the default is unity so that it runs at the same frequency as channel A, but there are, um, a bunch of different ratios from multiplication to division. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, if you are, um, using any of these uh, multipliers or dividers, um, you can't get the full uh, range from, from zero to 270 on the, uh, the uh, frequency spread. Okay, so beyond the uh, division and multiplications of the frequency ratios here, we also can do some uh, logic. And I'm not gonna read directly from the manual here because it just turns into word salad, but basically what you have here is um, you're just um, cross-modulating uh, B and A or C and A or D and A uh, using X or logic. Uh, and then down here, you get some amplitude modulation. So. Uh, this right here, B A M by A, will set the level of cross-channel amplitude modulation, uh, defaulting to none, which is zero, up to 127. The amplitude modulation is inverted so that the higher values of the waveform in channel A result in lower amplitudes of the waveform in channel B. Um, so if the relative frequency of channel B is set at unity or lower, then a type of wave shaping occurs. And then we just have this repeated here um, for C and D. So it's the same as B, but uh, the amplitude of channel C is modulated by the current output from channel B, um, and then D from the amplitude of uh, channel C. So um, it's just like this, this cascading um, cross modulation here. Um, and then CV4 destination uh, is you can you can put it to coupling or you can put it to spread or um, basically any of these uh, any of these parameters from um, from coupling on down. And then finally, we have uh, for our trig four input. It, this is a multiplier or divider, 
Um, so you can uh, send gates to control the frequency and then set those divisions. Uh, that's kind of hard to wrap your head around without seeing it. So let's just go to divide by eight and go in here. Oh, let's get that going a little slower actually. Let's see. Okay, so rel you know, relatively quick, and we'll just take a random gate here and put it into CV4 or trigger four. And now you'll see that it's dividing the frequency by eight every time the gate is high. And then you can switch this. Um, you know, you can divide by two to eight, or you can even multiply by four. Oh, there's multiply by two. So let's just go look at what that looks like. So now we're just multiplying by two every time the gate is high. So yeah, that is, uh, that's the menu rundown there. All right, really quick, we're gonna go over the, uh, the trig and CV ends. So trig one just resets uh, all the LFOs. Trig two will actually freeze all the LFOs in their tracks while the gate is high. And then trig three uh, will be the, um, the tap tempo. So that will act as the clock um, when you put a gate into it. Turn it really fast. We got really fast LFOs and we can turn it down. So we get clockable LFOs. Uh, we talked about trig four a minute ago. That's the divide and multiply um, the divisions um, that we set down here at the bottom. Um, now let's talk about our CV ins. CV in one is the master frequency, so it controls the frequency of LFO one. The CV in two is the um, the wave shape. So that's just gonna change all the wave shapes of our LFOs. CV3 is going to be uh, our phase um, or frequency spread. So if you have a positive voltage going in there, uh, you're, you're gonna be uh, shifting the LFOs out of phase with each other. And then if you have a negative, it will um, be changing the frequency. So if you actually have um, a bipolar source, it will do both. So that's pretty fun. Um, and then CV4 is mappable, which we talked about earlier um, in, the, in the, uh, the menu here. You have your CV4 destination. Um, yeah, and these are all your outputs. So why don't we dive into a patch and see this thing in action? I know, costume switch. All right, now that we know how to use it, let's build a, a shepherd's tone patch. If you're not familiar with a shepherd's tone, it's... Um, well, be warned, it's it's kind of anxiety inducing and scary, but it's uh, it's a pretty cool, um, it's actually like an auditory illusion where it sounds like notes, uh, the, the pitch of a note is constantly climbing or falling and never um, actually resolving or stopping. It's just kind of this like, yeah, well, you'll see here in a second. But yeah, it's um it's a patch that if you look online how to build it, there's all these different methods and all these different uh, you know, pieces of gear that you could use and some of it's kind of complicated, but I feel like with Quadraturia it uh is actually pretty easy. So, let's dive in. Okay, so it's pretty basic to set it up. Um you know, and if if you want to challenge me on whether this is a true uh, shepherd's tone, sound off in the comments. But it sounds like one to me, and it seems like a really easy way to uh, to get close to this um, this phenomenon. So um, you want to have your shape at like a sawtooth shape. You don't want to have any um, shape spread there because uh, you want them all to be uh, saw shaped. But you do want your um, your frequency or not your frequency, excuse me, your phase um, spread to be all the way up to 127 because that's what makes it a quadrature LFO. Uh, no coupling. And then uh, your output range, you wanna turn down very low. I've got it to 15. Um, and then the offset, I've got to 127. Um, that way we're not getting too low frequencies to bring the uh, oscillators into a sub audible range. And then I've uh, chosen lazy here and you can see I've got like almost 200 seconds for the uh, for the cycle of these waves and then everything else is just you know no offsets no no like ratio so it's it's actually really easy to set up so now the the, the oscillator setup is you just need to tune them all to the same um, note I got them all to like a3 I think um, and then you just take your outputs A through D and put them into the next four oscillators. So A, B, C, and D. I'm using the saw outputs. I started with the sine wave outputs because 
a lot of the definitions that I looked up said they had to be sine waves. Um, but I switched to saw just to see what it would sound like, and I think it sounds cool. And then you can see I've got these uh, these stackable cables here. Um, that's because I'm actually going to control um, some parameters of Typhoon, including the pitch, um, and then the uh, the density, size, and texture as well with these same LFOs. But let's just once again listen to. So there's our shepherd's tone. Now let's bring in some reverbs to make it a little spookier. And now finally I'm going to bring the mix up on the, uh, the Typhoon so we can get just some extra texture and weirdness here. All right, that's Quadraturia on the original firmware for Ornament and Crime. Um, I hope this video helped. Let us know what other apps from Ornament and Crime, uh, either firmware, that you'd like to see us do similar videos uh, about in the future. Thanks for watching.